So as you've heard this morning, a Kiwi recruiter who was at a job fair in the UK found that New Zealand's crime rate, cost of living and slow visa processing are issues that are putting off foreign workers from coming here. In fact, he found there was zero interest from workers to come to New Zealand, preferring Australia and Canada instead. Prime Minister Jacinda Ardern joins us for this and more this morning. And Prime Minister, I understand we actually have the Italian Government Air Force to thank for you being able to be with us on the programme this morning for getting you out of Antarctica. <laughs> Yeah, look, uh, not an unusual situation when there's a flight on the ground in Antarctica um, for others to jump on board. It wasn't just New Zealanders on board that flight. There were Americans on board that flight because there were issues with the American planes as well. And it's just the nature of the environment. Uh, the Hercules had been down on the ice for a number of days. That brings with it a bit more risk um, because of the temperatures. When we left, I think the wind chill uh, temperature was minus 25, and so that caused an issue with um, a seal, which is a seal in, with the engine, I should clarify, as opposed to a, to an a animal. physical that's uh, good. seal. <laughs> uh, so that's, that's the reason that we had those issues. But as I say, in those conditions, not particularly unusual, which is why there was a few of us um, hitching a ride back. Is... I should also add, we have new Hercs on order. Uh, of course, it takes a little while once you order Hercs for them to be produced, but they start manufacturing uh, the new Hercules for the New Zealand Defence Force next year, which yeah, I know so the Defence Force will be um, very pleased about. I think not operational until 2025. In the meantime, is the Boeing 7 Five are also breaking down. Is it just getting a little em embarrassing, potentially detrimental to our military no, partnerships? No, and look, to be here, I'm really defence. I'm really defensive about the New Zealand Defence Force here, and um, I don't the, think I'm criticising the, the, criticizing the Defence Force. Well, of course, you know, here, uh, I think it's not unusual, though, for there to be, um, to be issues with um, planes in certain conditions and environments. I've certainly been in countries where other countries have had issues with their own. It's, it seems to be a, a very big focus for New Zealand, though. Uh, so, look, we have, having said that, uh, we have put over $4 billion into uh, to boost uh, the capacity and capability of the Defence Force. Okay. We have P8s on order. We did that very early on in our term. And we have additional uh, new uh, C-130s, Hercules, on order as well. Uh, of course, though, these aren't instant. Uh, we made the decision, <laughs> but uh, the time delay between making those decisions and having them manufactured uh, and as part of our, our capability, there's a bit of delay there. But it's an issue we've, we've recognised, and, and that's why we've made those purchases. Okay, according to a recruiter we've spoken to this morning, just people getting getting people here on standard commercial flights is an issue. Um, we were speaking with Graham Rogers who was at a job fair in the UK. He spoke to up to 300 people. None of them were interested in coming to New Zealand, going to Australia or Canada instead because they were looking at visa processing times, the cost of living here, crime, housing. Does that concern you? Well, again, actually, I read some of the reports, and again, I, I can't speak to what an individual recruiter has experienced, but they themselves acknowledge that some of the, you know, some of people's perceptions there are, are wrong. When you look at, for instance, um, cost of living issues globally, uh, New Zealand actually has had lower inflationary impacts than many of those other countries. In terms of visa processing times, um, they are now well down. Uh, and, of course, you know, uh, the best reflection of that is the fact that we have 17,000 people now uh, who have work visas and are able to come into the country. We've had 12,000 people with working holiday visas come into the country. Uh, and we have, in terms of employers going out there and seeking workers, roughly 70,000 who have those approvals then to bring in uh, workers to fill their jobs. OK, but he's, uh, Graham's so, not just again, finding this in the UK because he was at a, a job fair in the Philippines too. We depend on Philippines a lot for a number of um, industries, healthcare, rural sector, there were people bringing printouts of supermarket prices to him. I mean, that's undeniably true, right? We can't say that all those issues are not true. 
Oh, yeah, a, a, absolutely. New Zealand has experienced increases in inflation. Uh, my point is... Inflation, uh, so cost of Canada, living, we, so we has do Australia, have an issue with crime. So has the UK. And the experience that we are having is far lesser than many of those other countries. Do we have a job to do to go out and make sure that people know about the positive story that we have to tell in New Zealand? Absolutely. It's why I've been leading trade missions uh, into really key markets for New Zealand. But what I've been founding, finding counter to the recruiter is that New Zealand is in demand. There is a global shortage at the moment of skills. A number of countries are competing to fill roles. Uh, however, at the same time, we still have, as I say, 17,000 work visas that have been issued for people to come into New Zealand. 12,000 people have already come in uh, on their working holiday visas, and we expect more. But we have to keep telling the positive story about settling in New Zealand and working here. Yeah, we have to be competitive with other countries that this recruiter says are, are doing a better job of that at the moment. I want to turn to Iran now. We learned oh, we, this week... We do, but we... But but we, I would argue that we are as well. We've just got to keep it up. And we have to work alongside each other as well and tell that positive story. We uh, heard this week about the two New Zealanders who were detained in Iran and, and thankfully ha have now been freed. Will we now designate the Iranian uh, National Guard as a terrorism organisation as the US and Canada has? Well, of course, uh, there are a number of things that we... well. I think the first thing I should say here is that I reject the idea that we didn't take a firm position on Iran because so we had two individuals in Iran. You didn't downplay your, your response because of the detaining of we the We were two. very clear in our position, and I will absolutely maintain that. We condemned what was happening. We called for the independent inquiry into the death of a young Iranian woman. Uh, we condemned the fact that there was no ability to have peaceful protest and that people's communications were shut down. Of course, at the same time, you can see now that we were also had a very difficult situation, but I believe we managed both. We are continuing to look at ways we can continue to amplify the concern that we have as those protests continue and as we see no signs of the Iranian government uh, uh, heeding to the calls to ensure that women and girls in particular and their liberties are protected and upheld. Do those so options we have asked for extra advice on what more on what more that we can do. I would just point out, though, there is only a handful of countries who have done what you've described around designating the Iranian Revolutionary Guard as a terrorist organisation. However, uh, we're getting a wide range of advice on what more we can do. Would sanctions be on the table? Uh, again, I do want to await the advice that we receive, but we will continue to look up ways that we can uh, that we can uh, continue to escalate and raise our concerns as we see no change in position from the Iranian government. There's a poll out this morning, Prime Minister, Horizon poll published in Staff. It's got New Zealand first on 6.75%, past that 5% uh, threshold, Labour 31.37, National 28.32. This would put Win Winston Peters again in the kingmaker position. What do you make of that? Oh, look, we're going to have a whole lot more polls in the next, you know, in the next 12 months out till the next election. Uh, I'm, I've always been consistent. I never read too much into any of them. Uh, and I think it's far, far too early for us to be making predictions of that nature at this point. For voters, though, they would want to know potentially mm. if they're going to vote for Labour, people are going to be thinking about this now, what potential partners you would go with. So the, we're looking at New Zealand first, you... already past the 5% threshold. You can surely give my voters an indication My point would always be to voters. Uh, my point to voters would always be, uh, you know, that if you want to see a Labour government and the ability for Labour to continue to make the progress on some of the hardest challenges New Zealand faces, then the best way to do that is to vote for Labour. Uh, it's always a risk with um, uh, the, those strategic votes because uh, very rarely do some of those, uh, the, do some of the minor parties, for instance, uh, uh, put firmly on record who it is that they would choose to work with. So it's always a safer bet, vote for the party that you want to lead, the one that you want to uh, dominate in any particular coalition government. So does that mean right now you're, you're ruling out working with Winston Peters, working with New it Zealand means that, It means that as with every election, I campaign for Labour. Uh, whatever we have after election day is what we work with. Whatever the voters deliver is what we work with. Um, but we will always we will always campaign for Labour. When we do head into the election campaign period next year, Will you still be the leader of the Labour Party? <laughs> I, 
<laughs> I've heard this. This rumour has floated around my entire five years in government. I have no plans uh, to change my role as leader. I'm not going anywhere. I've said this on the show a number of times. And while I'm here, might I also dismiss the rumour that I'm relocating to New Plymouth, as lovely as a place that it is. <laughs> I'm, I'm not intending to move either. Yeah, I hadn't heard that one. Um, but the, the rumours, I mean, yeah, I no, don't remember no, five years one. ago people um, I guess asking when you're in if this you're going to step down. Rumours circulate and it's just part of, you know, the nature of the role. But uh, this is not the first time I've had this one and I, it did come up last election as well. OK, but so just to be clear, come the election campaign next year, you will be the leader of the Labour Party. I still. am the Labour leader and I have no plans on changing that. OK, I was going to ask, will you still be on the billboards? But of course we know from 2017 that just because you're on the billboard doesn't necessarily mean you're the leader at that time. <laughs> Bit rough there. <laughs> well, no, I was just, you know, simply Well, technically I was on those way. billboards as well. <laughs> at the last minute, yeah, I was just sure. a deputy at that time. OK, um, Prime Minister, have you voted for Bird of the Year? No, I haven't. I haven't yet. Oh, you can't just chuck a controversial question at me like that without a, without a warning. <laughs> actually, actually, Prime Minister, I can tell you, we have breaking news right now. Oh, here we go. Um, I can actually tell you, because the embargo lifted while you were talking, um, this year's Bird of the Year winner, ladies and gentlemen, drumroll please, has been announced, and it is the Rock Wren. This little bird. What do you make of that, Prime Minister? The Rock Wren won. Well, bird of the year never ceases to surprise, um, <laughs> but I will forever and always be loyal to the black petrel, um, and ah. maybe maybe next year will be its year. The black petrel is in for a big 2023. Um, thank you very much, Prime Minister. Thanks for joining us on the programme this morning.